Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you might be. This is the Wix Online meeting number 15 uh, into 2014, starting to feel like the new year, which is always kind of nice, getting coding done, getting stuff going, good things like that. Uh, quick reminder to those people here, this meeting is recorded for those people that were unable to be here with all you beautiful people. Um, so just be aware that you are being recorded. Moving on. The agenda. I didn't get any agenda items for this week, so it looks like we basically just have triage and then anything else that comes up. Um, fortunately, we have a bit of stuff to do in triage because um, we skipped the meeting last week. So I think we should just go ahead and get started with uh, triage. Are you ready for that, Bob? I am set. All right, here we go. Triage, triage, triage. And then think about all your awesome questions you might ask and start tossing them in the comments if you want to have something to talk about after triage. Otherwise, this will be a short meeting, which is probably good because I only schedule it for a half hour when I meant to put it for an hour. Um, are we still starting from the top? Is that what we're doing, or are we starting from the bottom? Um, yeah, everything's relative, man. Yeah. And again, I've lost my mouse cursor. This is amazing bad timing. All right. Or just bad in general. Bad in general, it is. All right, just a second. Let me bring back a web browser that is about the right size so I can actually see my mouse cursor inside this thing. All right, prepare for black screen as I get this all set up. Always seems to do this while recording. I need to figure out what cause is the thing. Yeah, the phone ringing is Bob. That's yeah, funny. sorry. Uh, I wrote for bottom. All right, someone's voting for bottom, which I'm all for. We can change it up a little bit here. Oh, great. Now I've lost the mouse cursor over. <sighs> You've got to be kidding me. I've lost the mouse cursor on uh, Link now. This is all just kind of hovering. Wow. You have no idea how awesome this is right now. I know you can't see it, but. All right, hope you can see the web browser again. I've got to find a better way of doing that. OK, so people are voting for bottom, so we'll do bottom. This is an old bug. It's back, which means there's a comment. Look, the source code, this feature is not fixed. All right, cool. Uh, presumably, let's see. This is something, yeah, this is removing an ID. We could do this in 3x. So uh, open it as not fixed. Works for me. Because I remember us going through the bug going, well, I don't know, the doc says it's fixed. Anyway. Uh, do we have a Heath in the house? Because he's supposed to go look this up. No, he doesn't. All right. I'll add this bug 4243 to my list of things to send emails about today since I'm kind of getting my emails back on. Um, I've been out of touch for a while. Um, and let's see. So as Next. a general rule, do you want to deal with whips during triage? Um, let's go ahead and do the bugs, and then we'll come back for the whips. Okay. So we'll skip these three features because I know there are whips for them. Um, well, let's get through the bugs, just to make sure we get through the bugs, and then we can come back and discuss these. Unless someone is here that would like to discuss their things, and uh, I am here for Fire Giant, I would like to discuss these, but I'm pretty sure we're going to have time. Um, so let's go ahead and get the bugs like you suggest. I think it's a good idea. Can't run heat on an MFC Visual Studio 23. Seriously, people use heat MFC. Anyway. Um, uh, I think this is more a problem of um, heat and MS build. It looks to be like. Yeah, that's, I, this wouldn't surprise me. There's so many bugs in that area. So, yeah, sure. Heat, we could take it in 3x, not 3.8. Agreed? Agreed. It's, yeah. Database export all function. This must be DTF. It is. Export all forbidden symbols. Yeah. Yeah, seems to make sense to me. Yep. Bundle upgrade uninstalls unmodified po packages on XP. Um, on XP only? That's kind of trippy. Yeah, there's a related, I, or sorry, perhaps related bug. Um, and wow. I can't find it at the moment, but it basically, it talks about the dependency registration basically getting nuked. Oh, that's no good. Which might be related to this. Uh, I think that would be a great thing to add to this, and we could take this in 3x. But yeah, that's that's unfortunate. 
Yeah. XP is dead in a couple months, right? XP goes out of support. Doesn't yeah. mean it's dead. Yeah. Great. All right. Thank you for correcting my words. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we'll see what happens. I'm. We're not going away. It's just going to be like, yeah. I wonder how many people are going to. Um. Do this. No, I think they finished extending Windows XP, but unless they did it just recently. The only thing that I've heard recently is that uh, the security essentials, Microsoft's oh, right. antivirus, the antivirus they extended thing. that for like another year. Yeah, but yeah. what about the what about the security fixes for the day zero? But anyway, whatever. Uh, I I'm whatever. If, if until it is really really down in the you know when this reaches you know Mac popularity, then maybe we'll stop supporting <laughs> Windows XP. By the way, that's like four percent. XP has a ways to go before it hits that low. Yes, it does. Especially since it looks like it only drops by a couple percents every time they announce it. But however, you know, maybe in April, 20, April we're going to see all these machines just disappear as XP machines. Like, oh, everybody wait for a last minute. Wouldn't surprise me. But anyway, we'll just have to go wait for the end of the year and see what happens. Um, 2013 crashing with a layer diagram. Oh, that's too bad. It's probably true, too. Probably. Layer diagram. That's one of those fancy ultimate. Yeah. That code map stuff and things. That cool stuff. That X. Yeah. Probably another one of those votive things. Um, do you want to put it in 3.9 or putting it in 3x? And I mean, I don't know where. You're you're the person I know last that was trying to make votive work better with 2013 and MPF and all that. Jazz. I so never wanted that title. Um, yeah. Currently, all of those kinds of bugs are are assigned to 3x. Okay. Um, if um, if we get around to fixing that in three nine, then I figured okay. I'd break the bugs in. And sounds reasonable to me. Should probably add a comment that says that highly likely we think this is related to MPF whatever issues. Right. Well, I'm making that up. I assume that's true because it seems to be a common theme whenever we hit these issues. Carrying on, Doc. Doc. While following home using very nice docs. Hey, someone likes our docs. Trivial issue. Uh, geez, that, 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 oh, oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know if we need an assignment agreement for a edit like this. Um, no, it'd be purely factual. Yes, we we uh, don't. Uh, but um, why don't you just give this to me? I'm going to go through doc today anywhere. I'm going to be updating some doc, and I'll just grab this thing while I'm in there. Okay. Uh, three nine though, I think. Uh, oh, sure. Pat's page of this has wrong background color. That doesn't surprise me. Uh, no. The dark. Uh, theme. It only shows up in a dark theme. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Someone want to fix that? Uh, three X, not three eight. Correct. Good time for us to kill three eight, I think. File size failure lost in what? Failure result lost in lo, lost really? Oh, I see. We overwrite the HR before we log it. That is kind of annoying. Yeah, that's kind of annoying. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Unless we don't want that error code coming out of here, but... Oh, we end up... We end up doing... Yeah, okay, I can see that. That seems safe. I really hate it when this happens to me, too. So, yeah, why don't you give this to me in 3.9 and I'll fix it, because that's it really is annoying when you're trying to root cause problems and you get different error numbers. I'll agree with that. Or you don't get the get the right error numbers. All right. Certificate property, if you use overwrite, it fails. Oh, wow. Yeah, that seems wrong. 
Excuse me. Um, yeah, that seems busted. Looks like we're not handling the attributes we set. <laughs> yeah, we could fix that in 3x. I don't think it would break anything. Hey, this suddenly starts working. Where it always failed before. You probably weren't using it if it always failed, so when it suddenly started working, it'd be... Yeah, all right. Yeah, that seems reasonable. Okay. Could take that in 3x. I was going, oh, could we break anything doing this? I'm like, uh, no. No, I think it's fine. Feature request. A built-in burn disk space variable. Well, there'd have to be many disk space variables, right? Well, yeah. That's the... Yeah. That's the problem. Although I'm wondering if, if yeah, this is uh, asking for the wrong thing. The, the the right thing might be, you know, burn should have some kind of a costing mechanism. Uh, well, I'm actually curious. I mean, what happens if you actually get to the point that you can't you can't cache your packages? And you're going to get out of this space, and all kinds of things are going to start unrolling, and yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's just. The, the error codes will start flowing back to you and your blog file will probably be overflowing and all the logging will start failing. And all, I mean, it's just going to be failure, failure, failure. It's just going to be catastrophic failures all over the place. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, the multiple, multiple drives things, drives thing really complicates the world. Um, yeah, it's, you know, it's like, yeah, sure. So if you're installing this here and that here and this here, I mean, really, there's a whole lot of stuff you have to know from, like, about the packages and where they're installing and yeah, all the exactly. configuration that goes into them. So I think in the end, the only thing that Burn could really do is, you know, like, the cost that it knows. And it already provides you the cost of the packages, so you can do that. So, I mean, it could basically go... I know where the package cache is, and I know you don't have disk space there. I suppose you know you right. can do that kind of thing. Interesting. Yeah, your temp drive and your thing. So yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, sure, it's a reasonable feature request. Could it be done in three X? I don't know if it can be done. Well, it very much depends on how it's implemented. So yeah, it could be done in three X and whatever that. All right. I mean, yeah, it's 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 not a horrible idea. A lot of no. This is a fantastic starting place for someone that wanted to do a whip. I'm not sure I would start with this design, and I'm not sure I'd start with this. Exactly title. right, right, right. But uh, <laughs> this is the beginning of a whip because there's a whole lot of things to go think about. Man, what would I improve here, and how would I do this? Yeah, it's all kinds of good stuff there. Generate list of files included in an MSP during patch process. A command line switch that would generate the list of files. I don't really want to generate another file. What if we just well, spat them out to the command line? Like, if you're running in verbose mode, we just print the file names out. Um, <clears throat> you'd have to go back and parse is the problem. Um, but, you know, if as long as we gave some kind of a something that's easily parsable, um, I don't know. I guess I don't like adding all these funny little features that nobody ever uses. We did that in the past, and it just ended up creating complexity in the code. I guess that's I'm sensitive to this right now because I've been dealing with it in four, and I've been removing stuff that nobody uses. Right. Well, and and I mean, I I, I can appreciate that Pyro knows best what's going to end up in the patch, so it makes sense that Pyro could provide that information, though really the problem is there aren't enough tools working off of patches to get, to provide that information. I mean, really, that ought to be extremely simple, right? Hi, I'm a patch. Please tell me what's in me. And the truth is that's hard to get. Because you have to target an MSI, right? Well, well, that, that information is all in the patch. But, yeah, okay. I mean, obviously it's... It, there are good reasons that it's that there isn't a simple tool to provide that information, but you know, in the end, it's like why not? What if you could like melt a Retina uh, Wix PDB from a patch? Take mm -hmm. the information. <clears throat> it's kind of the same problem. The Wix PDB for a patch has all of the the changes that went into the transforms. Sure. Um, so it could figure it out, but it's not trivial. Uh, uh, right. Again, this is where Pyro 
power down. Oh, that file changed. Oh, sorry. I, I, for, I forgot about the binary diff, right? But then the PDB don't restore the hat. Oh, but only... Uh, yeah, okay. All right, yeah. Uh, it, it's it's not hard. It's just, you know, you'd have to look through the transforms, look you know, look for the things that are that are different. I mean, you could probably you could get it without going through the transforms. You could get it, I think. Well, I, actually, I don't know. I don't want to have another it, file. It's it's a it's a bigger chunk. I, I mean, to be honest, I'm. I don't know. I kind of waffle on either. I understand you wanting to avoid the special output files. <clears throat> um, I'm not the, the output. I'm just. You know, you'd have to sit there and parse it to get just the things that you're looking for, which kind of you know, meh. But as long as it's easily parsable, I'm I am okay with that model. I, I guess you know the question is: Do you just want to see it, or do you want to do something with that information later? If you just want to see it, that's why I thought. Like, if you just want to see it, yeah, I can see us printing that out. Call it good. What, doing something with it later? Hmm. Well, <laughs> trust me, you do enough patching, and you start to get, you know, people are like, well, you know, what targets does this patch? What products does this patch target? You know, what are the changed files? What are the changed file versions? Yeah, I have a hard time putting that in some random text file that... Yeah, it... it it's, it's like, all right, cool. Go to the Wix PDB or the patch itself. Introspect over it. There, there's your answer. I mean, I appreciate it's hard and all that kind of stuff, but that seems like a much better way to solve those problems than, oh, the build process created this artifact. Don't lose this artifact. It only does it optionally. I mean, it's like, oh, no, 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 no. <sighs> Truthfully, the, this is... It's an interesting guess, feature. It's a more so, general request for for tooling on top of, of patching. Yeah, so I'm, I'm okay with that. I, so let's add that comment in the whole, you know, the, not sure about generating it as during the build process or if there's some way to read PDB or something like that. Let's add that comment. We can put it 3x and someone wants to come on. This, again, is another one of those things that would be a good whip. To, as you can see, there's a lot of things to think about before implementing this. Yeah, yeah, this is... Uh, cool. As soon as we get that far yeah. into it, it's like, all right, cool, we, we have qualities for a whip and someone should sit down and write them all down, which we're not doing on this call, so let's keep going. Agreed? Well, I don't know, I'm kind of with Eric. Yeah, patching is hard. You want to just punt it? No, no, I'm... I mean, you want to suspend it? I I personally am sick of patching, but I realize that some people like it. Oh. Okay. Uh, next. <laughs> I got nothing there, dude. All right. Modify Burns' assumptions about detect only. Well, that sounds very dangerous. Oh, this is another, this is another, we already have a bug about detect only, right? Uh, well, I, yes, but this is what I asked for more detail and I'm, I still don't really understand the, the problem here. Well, fortunately we have Sean on the call. Um, I, if, assuming this is the same Sean, um, yeah, it is. So it's good. Do you have audio, Sean? All right, let's try. And you can explain. What the heck? All right. Can we hear you? Are you speaking? No, maybe he has no audio. I guess not. No headset audio there. Um. So, so... I, my question when I asked for the more detail was, uh, what, what's the actual problem that that you get from the detect only attribute? Yeah, so your BA has to request that it be present. The default requested was none. BA requested present. So it all worked. 
to downgrade and obsolete. Yeah, it would take it to downgrade, which means... This feels like the same bug that we had before, where you use detect only, and we always think that it's a minor upgrade kind of thing. Although, wait a minute, this is, isn't it? Well, maybe this is in the end. It's a major upgrade. But how? It's detect only. It can't be a major upgrade if it's detect only. Am I forgetting something? They're doing something special if it's really old. The first line is the major upgrade. Oh, I see. They get a previous version and then they get a detect only. So it's it's hitting two of these actually. I see. I see. Ah, uh, that's that's tricky. So they're using this yeah, this is this is the same problem with burn using detect only to determine obsolescence, right? Wasn't there some change that we need to do to not assume anymore? The only bug I recall was how we logged it, but Oh, how we logged it. Related. I see. So the handling here is that there's two. I guess we could say we found both, and we could pick the better of these two, right? I mean, the really sad thing is I bet if you flip the order of these two rows in the MSI, which of course you can't control, uh, right. and burn detected them in the opposite order, you might get what you wanted. So the change could be to go, oh, look, we have two things that hit the same space. Take the one that is the major upgrade over the one that would say downgrade. Which would basically mean throw this one away because it's superseded by this check. Weird. If we already have a major, if we detect a major upgrade, don't switch us to downgrade. I mean, I could see that too. Like, I could see this being like, look, we figured out we're doing a major upgrade, and then later on we figured out, like, because the current code in burn, this is not simple code, by the way, but the code in burn goes, oh, we figured out we're a major upgrade. Oh, we're now being a downgrade. And you're like, wait, but you already figured out you're a major upgrade. Why'd you do that? Um, I could see that. Reasonable to take the biggest action? Yeah, right. I mean, because there's no way that you're doing a major upgrade. And there's no way you're out into the MSI with a detect only. Because like, it's basically saying, look, we figured out there's a major upgrade, and then we figured out there's a detect only. Well, the major upgrade is going to happen. This detect only is going to be nothing, right? Because we made an ass our assumption is going to get trumped by the fact that, yeah, there really is a major upgrade. <laughs> yeah, except that in the second assumption, we prevented the package from being able to major upgrade itself. Right. Well, I think what we're probably doing is stomping. Like, we figure out we're doing a major upgrade, and then we yeah, come around yeah. later, and then we figure out we're doing uh, detect only. It's like, oh, obsolete it. And you're like, wait, but you thought it was major upgrade. And it's like, oh, yeah, oops, um, bad on us. We give every row the option to trash us. Right, where we probably should go, well, we already figured out we're major upgrade. We're not going to go to downgrade. Yeah, yeah. It's just one okay. more check inside that already complex if statements <laughs> and it I would be more them. it would be more correct as well because if it's already detected major upgrade then then it's not going to do a downgrade MSI is not going to so yeah yeah major upgrade should trump so I don't like the title of this bug, but that is what the issue is. Can you get that in the comments? And, then, that. and yeah, we should open this. This could be fixed. I, I, I want to say this could be fixed in 3x. I'm a little afraid. It is behavior change, and that makes me nervous. I know. Um, but I don't know how the previous behavior would ever be good for you. Yeah, right, right. It's, again, are you actually depending on behavior like that? Really? 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, all right, cool. Yeah, I think we can take it in 3X. Uh, someone just has to go choose to fix it. So, yeah, cool. That'll work. That's tricky, tricky, tricky. Ah, burn, my favorite place to go find really, really, really freaking hard bugs. Um, <laughs> yeah. Although, to be fair, I've been working on some, I guess I have some really, really hard features, but burn has really, really hard bugs in it. All right, performance counters, this does not create category blah, fine. So performance counter should be enhanced. We could do that in 3X. Um, I don't understand the italicized code. It's looking like it's a it's looking like it's a an excerpt from a doc that they don't link to, so Yeah, but it wouldn't surprise me. There's you know it's like figure out that these are V two counters and set this thing to three and so on and so forth. Well I guess that's my question. I don't know what that means. I don't either, but whoever's fixing this feature will need to go figure that out. No, that's my question is: Is this something we can actually do in 3x, or do we need to? Uh, my assumption is it's going to be additive, but well, that's if, sorry. If I not, guess, if not need, it sounds like we need to add, you know, an attribute or something that says, you know, oh yeah, go write this key. Or performance counters also look at. Uh, no, they do they. I don't remember all the stuff that they look at, but yeah, I mean, it could be that. But if it's additive and it goes in the attributes, it should be fine. Yeah, I mean, okay. And and if it doesn't, then we'll look at the pull request and go, whoa, you can't do that. That's breaking. Right. And then we'll have to move to four. But I think you well, can do it. Yeah. And the whip process should help. Uh, yeah, this is really a feature, isn't it? It is a feature. Yeah, okay. I'm done with that. Util extension registry search uses value where normal... Oh, okay, right. The extension uses value. The normal registry search uses name. <laughs> sure. Because being consistent would just be silly. Mm -hmm. uh, is that reg locator? Yeah, MSI uses name. All right, that's why we use name in Wix. And then we probably use value because that probably makes more sense. Exactly. Ah, yes, I would use value because it's the official Microsoft term. Well, that's not actually true. Name is the official Microsoft term because that's what the Windows installer uses. <laughs> oh. Yes, uh, but what does the registry API use? Uh, I'm, I'm, no, I'm, the problem is everyone calls it, you know, registry values. It's like, uh, no, it's the name, and the value is the thing in the name. And, yes, and the key is the thing that isn't the other thing, which sometimes we call right. the path, which is also freaking confusing. So. And then there's a default value or name or something. Yeah. We're not sure. Yeah. All right. Um, I agree it would be great if these were consistent. Uh, if this is a 4X bug. I don't know which way to go. Um, yeah, right. Yeah, I'm, I'm, <laughs> either we support both or we, you know, come down on one side or the other. Support both. Uh, no, no, no. Let's not do both. That's just, no, 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 no. Because there actually is on registry, va uh, no, no, no. Oh, God. Oh, that's not good either because we actually have an element called registry value. True. Well, that's but the it other has thing. a name on it. But it has a name on it. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna add that to the bug because you also do have to consider registry key and registry value. Right. Um. Because it's you know if we're gonna go for consistency, if we're gonna fix one consistency bug, we might as well be consistent throughout all the things that use. All right. Whatever these things are called. So this goes in 4x, and if someone wants to fix it there, they can fix it. We should go back and deprecate things in 3.9 and all that kind of good stuff. This is a 4x bug to start. Yep. Um, and if someone doesn't take it soonish in 4x, then it goes to 5x, because we're not going to change it in 4x to break things later. Um, anyway, I, I only care so much. I mean, I, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I like the idea of consistency, but I do too. now it's almost 
kind of ingrained behavior. So I no, I'm I'm fine with fixing it. I'm just not not enough to go do the work myself right now. Do right. everything else I'm doing. All right. When building a library, you may want to install a reg key or file or to whatever location native package which uses it. Two possible solution exists. Add a binder variable. That won't work. No, because there's a lot more than changing the yes, no on that. Yes. Change the type of Win32 third value. Or the other option, which is to put both in your library and then let them pick the one they want, which is what we do with all the extensions. That's easier. Just put everything in the library. Well, yeah, though that does require additional additional conditionals. But you may want both. But and then a switch. I, the, I, sorry, I, I I agree with you that that offering both is the only solution, or if that's not what you're saying, forgive me, but it's the only solution because you can't, I don't think you can make this call automatically. Yeah, well, yeah, and it's, just like John just said, which is what I was getting to, is sometimes you need both 32 and 64 in the 64-bit build. So exactly. you'd be screwed. Right. And like, this, no. Plus, this is going to turn into a whole lot of code generation at link time, and no, like, I'm not, not for, this is, 64-bit's already crazy enough as it is. And it's more than just, you know, yes, no for, the component is. type. Yeah. So. so, yeah, I I don't... This is... Create a library, put both the things in it. If your library supports both, put both in it. It's, I think, pretty straightforward. Yeah. Yes, the identifiers have to be different for x86 and x64. And it's work to put it in the library, yeah. I build two libraries if you want. I mean, it's a lot of... I don't think we should be doing this inside the library. I don't think the library should be flipping, flopping inside itself. I, just, I, can't, I can't come up with a set of rules in my head that work. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of exceptions to that. I don't think that's the way to go. All right. We're three minutes over my allotted, or my, my specified time, but... I think everybody's prepared for an hour, so if people start dropping off, I understand. But I'd like to get to a couple of these whips, because there's some cool stuff back here. Um, this is not a terribly exciting one, but it's very useful in the future. Um, this is... So this whip that we're talking about doing here at Fire Giant is um, allowing you to define the same... Uh, directory in different places and have them collapse, which is usually a big no-no, or would normally be a big no-no. Um, but when you think about the way the registry key keys work, the Windows installer automatically does that. And the only reason we create, didn't allow it before, well, one of the big reasons is because MSI didn't allow it. So what happens, what we see in really big customers is they end up having to create something like a folders.wxs. We actually have this in Wix, too. And you have to, like, do this. You have to highly fragment your your folders. And this, like, you just end up with this gigantic file with all these folders, and they're all referenced and stuff like that. It creates a lot of nasty... Um, well, it's very hard to then figure out, oh, the install folder is inside... Oh, the program files folder, not the manufacturer folder, and stuff like that. Um... And so the proposal here is to go, um, if two directories are identical, then they will merge, or they will, the, the linker will declare them safe and merge them um, and make one single directory out of it. Um, they do need to be identical, um, but that's not usually a problem, because if they're not identical, then you end up with two IDs, and well, then they're fine, right? If, they're, if you have two different IDs for the same thing, it works out. And if you have this same ID for two different folders, well, then that's just bad. <laughs> that, would, that would be chaos. So it ends up being, look, let's just allow this to happen. And the big thing that kind of drove us to this point was that, one, this is really nasty code that ends up being hard to maintain. And also, this is kind of how reg keys work. So um, that was the idea behind this thing. It makes it much easier to deal with it, like much easier to deal with registry keys and um, 
the Wix tool set than it is to deal with directories and stuff, which is too bad considering how important directories are. Um, yeah, no, the goal is not to to, to not merge uh, or to not warn. This is going to be the new behavior. If you warn, you're going to get a lot of warnings, presumably, because you're going to get a lot of this, you know, bin folder to find where it is. Um, the the one thing I wanted to point uh, another thing I want to point out is that um, and this came up before. Uh, if this is just done in the naive way where these things were merged, you could actually get into a case where you do a directory ref to like that bin folder and it would bring in multiple fragments from one directory ref based off of whatever you provide in the link line, which of course is really scary. Like that has lots of crazy different implications. Um, and it goes very much against the Wix tool set. It throws everything upside down. So this feature, the idea is that it will only work on private identifiers. And private is a new feature that we're almost done with here at FireGiant that will get code reviewed soon, maybe today. Um, so that if they're private, then you can know that they can never be referenced outside of their section, which would prevent the problem I just described, and everything works out really well. Um, and so by making it private, this works out extremely well. Now, the reason I bring this up is because in the next whip we want to talk about, which is the one where it's really interesting, um, we want to do the inline syntax that allows you to do this kind of stuff is what we're proposing. And then, so basically this feature, this collapse directories is necessary um, for to do the uh, inline directory syntax, which I think is where it's really cool. Right, that's, and Blair, you're right. It, when a ref that can be satisfied in the same fragment, don't let the, the linker pull in other ones, right? That's what private does works great. Now, <laughs> on my machine, it works great. Um, right? So that's what this whip is about. Make sense? Yes, I hope. Well, I kind of see this as, as you know, part of the three, right? Yeah. It, well, uh, the, 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 um, the uh, what do we call it? Uh, access modifiers was kind of interesting by itself. Uh, true. Well, I mean, um, each of them is interesting by itself, because but, yes, except that you, we can't do the last one without the first two. <laughs> yes, right, right. But, and, but I mean, even this is interesting because I've worked it's true. today work with the idea that you have this you know huge list of directories and and I mean the funny thing is you can complain and I do mightily about you know some huge. Uh, levels of, of of hierarchy in in defining directories, you know, because directory, 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 yeah. directory, you know. But at least those levels provide you a clue because directories themselves are hierarchical. Yeah. And let me tell you, looking at something like what you see on the screen right now with fragment directory ref, you know, you get more than a couple layers deep into the into the directory hierarchy, and you go. What I mean, just and God forbid you have you know say ten thousand or of them or so. Yeah. Uh, All right. Cool. So I got someone. Blair says he likes it. Anybody else think they like it? And um, yeah, this this feature is kind of nice. It's going to be the next whip that we want to talk about. That's I think where people will get more excited. Basically yes. All right. We got basically yes. All right. We'll declare that victory. So. That can go open in 4.0, and we'll hopefully get progress on that um, today. Because the real exciting one is this concept of inline directory syntax. And there's a whip for this as well. Um, and this thing is freaking cool. Um, it allows you to take something that is like this, all of this stuff, and turn it into this instead. Um, alternatively, you could also name the folder if you wanted to have a public identifier for it. Um, you could do um, this. So you'll also be able to put the identifier inside a directory. And in the end, it creates this. <laughs> so it's the same in the end, but uh, this is going to be a really cool feature. 
Yeah, I, I, I mean, I like the mix personally, where you're going to have like bin folder defined uh, globally, quote unquote, and then you're going to have components that go directory bin folder slash subfolder. Oh yeah, you could do that too. That I, you know, the you're going to want to define, you're going to want to avoid the the repetition of program files folder my company my product you know. Um, but then to be able to locally define the subdirectories, that's that's really key. That's the prob that's the problem you have today with you know the the ten thousand directories in a single file, is that sometimes you need to define all of these things. If there's any possibility of sharing, you need to share them. Um, but if you can define you know if you have a component group say that goes into one directory and it's the only thing that goes into that directory you never need to expose that directory to the rest of the world that's right so you can see how this requires private because in the end um, all these identifiers end up becoming private um, unless you put an ID on it so like see here this component this bin folder ends up being private so its identity and all that stuff uh, will end up hitting that collapse feature we just discussed, right? When it hits another, if you end up doing this component and you choose to spell out your directories like this everywhere, you don't mind the repetition, which is against what Bob just said, but you could do it that way, <laughs> then could. it would end up collapsing all those because those are all private and all the right things would happen. So you can see how this builds on the identifier access things, the collapsing happening only in privates to prevent our crazy linking problem where multiple one director ref can bring multiple things, so that's all good, and then this feature comes along on top of it, and you end up getting the best of all worlds, and I think it ends up being very clean. You could yeah. also, you know, define this as, you know, a protected folder or an internal folder, and it's only inside your Wix lib that you can see it and stuff like that. So anyway, um, yeah, all right, cool. So this is, the, I already got a couple of features that said they like this feature, so I think we can open this one. This is the one that we wanted. Um, <laughs> this one drove us to writing those other two whips. Um, although I have to admit, after playing with the identifier access stuff with some of our bigger customers, I really think it's going to be helpful because we can just go, look, mark all this stuff private, now you don't have to worry about it. And they're like, oh, wow, my stuff can be hidden from other people. Scope, it's awesome. It's not just gigantic, huge global identifier mess, although we didn't solve the global identifier mess completely. But that's a discussion for another day. So anyway, I think that went over fine for open. So these two are hopefully coming in very soon because now that I've got the linker doing the access modifiers we think the collapse directory and the inline these aren't actually gonna be too hard to write now that that's all in place all right so now there's this thing heat's not here allow administrators and users to redefine the cache locations I still think this is a good idea I just sent mail about it um, Asking about the use of known folders because I'm I'm not seeing the win for that. But Al, I like your idea in that mail on on using something that's policy driven. Yeah. Um, well, in in the end, it seemed like I was reading the whip, which is currently in draft form, so you have to go into the source control to see it. But um, I was like looking at it going. It seemed like there's this whole there's actually this one part like and if administrators want to do that, they can go change it with you whatever tool they want. I'm like, oh, known folders doesn't have a way through policy to change them from what I've been able to see. So I'm like, well, at that point, yeah. then why not just use policy? Right, right. And we already use policy for logging and burn. So I was like, let's just use policy. We already support that. So anyway, that was, I'm curious if there's something else. What, I didn't get the other reason. So anyway, hopefully he'll respond because he wasn't able yeah. to have a meeting apparently. Um, but otherwise, I think we should do this feature. We just need to get the right design on it, which is what the whole whip process is about. Agreed? I would agree with that. All right. So let's go. Yeah. So yeah, we'll go have a discussion about how to implement this, and it's all good. Which at this point means I think we've covered all our bugs today. Ah, too low, too low. No, we were missing this one. All right, I'll have to start a mail thread about this one, and then we'll hopefully get that. So, cool, triage, all done, right? Agreed. Uh, yeah. There's nothing else that's 
There's nothing yes. else to discuss at this point. So, anything out there? I didn't see any things coming back. Um, anybody? Uh, I didn't see anything. Any other comments, questions, things? People excited about 2014? Excited about Wix 3.9 or 4.0? Features people are working on? kind of quiet out there right now. It's like, I don't know if people realize we really need to get stuff into 3.9 and 4.0 if we're going to get it, um, if we're going to get anywhere. So um, if you have ideas, let's start getting them on the mailing list or wherever we're going to get them so that we can start making progress. Or you're going to find 3.9 will be gone before you know it, and as will 4.0, which means the big opportunity to do huge breaking changes will disappear quickly because we're not going to do 4.0 for two years. Um Unlike previous releases in the past, that's a that's a bit a bit of a change. Um, yeah, I have a blog post that's in perennial draft status, hopefully to get published this weekend. Um, that that talks about you know what, what we talked about two weeks ago um, during the online meeting about you know kind of the 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 stake in the ground for for three nine. Um, and, but it's even bigger for 4 right? This is, you know, I know I'm used to the idea of the of the two-year releases, if only because, you know, it's usually been done with volunteer labor. Um, so, so yeah, yeah. New, but we got a lot of negative feedback about doing that too. So yeah, oh, oh, absolutely. Yeah, I'm not saying it's a good thing. Just saying it's. A thing. So yeah, well, plus I think a lot of people will be really. We'll be more interested in this directory syntax, and if we do what we did in three, where we locked it up for so long, that would be bad. So yeah, it's a matter yeah. of getting stuff in and get going. Um, so anyway, uh, fun stuff. I think that's all I've got for today. If that's there, anything else in the in the galleries come up? Uh, going, going. All right. I think we're gonna call it that puts us at 10 minutes early, which is kind of what we expected these meetings would go. They'd go a little bit faster. So thank you, everybody, for showing up and hanging out and uh, doing what you always do, which is having great conversations. Thanks for opening your bugs and helping us get through them. Um, until next time, you guys have a wonderful week. I'll talk to you later. Bye now.